All right, today we are going to be giving you some wide receivers that we think there are safer options you could pivot to. We're going to call this sell these wide receivers, but in reality, there's nothing wrong with the wide receivers in themselves. It's just the fact that they have some risk associated with them, and we would prefer to go to some safer assets. So that's kind of going to be uh, the gist of this video. Make sure you just keep in mind you're not going to like some of these. Tell us why you disagree or tell us why you do agree with us. Just keep it civil. We really appreciate you watching. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. As always, uh, we are producing Dynasty content every single week at this point, putting out tons of videos a week. So make sure you subscribe to get all the latest videos from us. So again, technically, pivot to safer wide receivers from these guys is what this should really be called. Because like when you're looking at this list, I mean, there are individual qualities of each of these receivers that we really like and actually as nfl receivers we really like a couple of these guys yeah but in in dynasty we're going to give you some specific examples of uh who you could be pivoting to from these receivers and why we don't like their value in dynasty and why we don't think they're safe assets as well so the, our first one's going to be terry mclaurin and if you've watched the show you know that we we essentially evaluate terry mclaurin how he is i mean he is what a wide receiver two, career wide receiver two in fantasy, and he's just mid. Yeah, it's he just is. It, he's it, always been overdrafted. Even I mean, two to three years ago, being drafted like he had this elite wide receiver one ceiling, and he just never got to that point and has not. And then Washington goes and drafts Jahan Dotson in the first round last season, and the midness continues. So I, I mean, Minocity. last year we we say or last season in 2022 that that was Terry's best season. It actually, really wasn't. <laughs> he had 13.5 points per game. He was a wide receiver. Guess what? 22 on the year, and um, his best season was a sophomore season where he had 14.9 points per game as a wide receiver. 20. His career is 29th, 20th, 29th, 22nd. Do you see a trend there? Wasn't he 14th in PPR leagues last year? Uh. In PPR, yes, um, he he I may he had jumped up to he, he may have. Been, I don't think he was that high because he only had seventy seven receptions. So even yeah, so like he, he he had less than he did less yardage and or less receptions than he did his sophomore season. So Terry McLaurin already twenty seven years old, and that's I mean he's got obviously he's got time left. But the biggest to me the biggest X factor that Nathan mentioned is Jahan Dotson here. I think people are underestimating Jahan Dotson in terms of what he was able to do his rookie year when he came in. He has very good draft capital. He, While he was semi-touchdown dependent, and I think that's why his value is what it is, When he in the games that he did play, he looked good. He looked very good. And I'm not sure of their, their splits when they played together necessarily, but I do know that with Jahan Dotson just being 23 now? just uh, Yeah, I think he just turned 23. I mean, in him looking like that already in his rookie year, his true rookie year of the NFL... There's there's a ton I like about Jahan Dotson. I do think he's our, my our prediction is that he's going to eventually take that wide receiver one role in Washington. Yeah, and I and I was still I was still right about Terry's points per game is different than his overall rank in a, in PPR league. So he oh, was oh, 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 he oh. did finish as as a, the the best he ever has in PPR overall in points scored. He was still wide receiver fourteen, which is good. He definitely exceeded expectations. We didn't expect him to score that high this year, but on a points per game basis, he was still the same that he has been his entire career. Okay, that makes sense. So now, like, why I get it? You're hating on Terry, and and this is a sell video, so don't be mad at us for being negative. We really like all these guys as players, and we like them as human beings. We just don't like their dynasty values, and it's a game. Uh, who could you pivot to off of Terry McLaurin? Looking at the the gold standard here, keep trade cut. Um, players to even trade. Not the gold standard. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> uh, the 111. I'm taking the 111 over Terry McLaurin all day. In our ADP, you can get the 109. So even the 109. Uh, Jahan Dotson. Yes. Take the younger receiver that yes. is likely to morph into that wide receiver one. Uh, Marquise Brown. Yes. The wide receiver yep. one in Arizona. Uh, George Kittle. Yes, take the elite tight end and tight end premium leagues. And then it also has the 112, but we can go the other way and say the 110 and the 109. So you're still getting a late first, late 23 first for Terry McLaurin uh, in a class where now the late first are actually starting to lose value because people are underwhelmed by the class, even though the class actually still looks fairly deep and fairly good. So that's yep. a good trade in itself. But again, guys like Dotson, Marquise Brown, George Kittle, all guys that we'd rather 
own than Terry McLaurin. Just yeah, and in a super flex league too, according to our ADP, he's going right around Kenny Pickett and Jared Goff. Those are no. I'll, those I'll are take no, both those, those no guys brainers. for sure. Those are no brainers. JMO. Jamison Williams, one we're going to get so much hate for. There are a couple guys in Dynasty that you really can't say anything about without getting completely trashed for. One of them is obviously Justin Fields. You cannot say anything about Justin Fields, negative, or people will poop on you. And the other one, that really the other bigger one, is Jamison Williams. Uh, Jamison Williams, last year, coming into the NFL, obviously came off an, an, an ACL tear in the National Championship game at Alabama and before that, I think there were a lot of people that thought he was the best receiver in that class coming into the NFL. Uh, the draft capital, although he did tear his ACL, was still extremely respectable. Obviously, he went, I think, 11th right to the to the Lions. Yeah. So, I think, so right around there, that's great draft capital for a receiver. He came in. He looked like he was going to be potentially the wide receiver one on that team. Uh, some things have changed since then, first of all. Amon Ross St. Brown is the wide receiver one in Detroit. So the funny thing about this is, the, the, the very funny thing about this is, you can't say anything bad about Amon Ross St. Brown because he's proven himself and he's the wide receiver one and he's elite, but you also can't say anything about, uh, bad about Jameson Williams. And while I have seen, and while we have seen duos perform at very high levels on the same team in the NFL, I'm not sure the Lions is going to... Jared Goff, they cannot expect Jared Goff to be that elite producing QB to... to to support two elite producing wide receivers. And I mean, you saw what they did in the run game. They definitely wanted to cater to Jamal Williams specifically, and even DeAndre Swift sometimes in the red zone. And that obviously takes away a ton of touchdown opportunity in the red zone for two receivers to produce. And on top of that, you now have Bijan Robinson being mocked to the lions as well, which is a really interesting landing spot. And honestly, I like it. As a landing spot, I think it's that offense is so explosive and so loaded. That's just another weapon you, that you could add in there. And that takes away some major offensive opportunity for a second wide receiver to produce. The one thing Jamo has going for him is that Hawkinson left that offense. That's but, definitely a plus. But the other popular mock for the Detroit Lions is a tight end, actually. Yes. Which would yes. probably infuriate Lions fans. They're but, probably going to get a tight end. So, again, nothing. JMO was one of my favorite receivers coming out last year, but it was because he was going in the seventh, eighth, ninth round of startups. I loved his value. I thought he was going to be way better than that. At the time, I wasn't totally sold on Amon Ra, so I was drafting him everywhere. Yeah. Now so, he's going in the middle of the fifth. That's the problem. And why did he jump up in value, guys? I. I we knew he wasn't going to do a lot his rookie year anyways, but what he did do was what, like a 40 yard in around and then a broken coverage touchdown. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't see any justification for him. Like even maybe jumping around out of anticipation, he's jumped like two, two and a half rounds here. So l- looking at that, I, I around the, the wide receivers, he's going around like in startups. You're talking about Traylon Burks, uh, yep. somebody who, who flashed from efficiency level, extremely high. Michael his, Pittman, your Michael Pittman, Chris Godwin, Debo Samuel. I'm taking all of those every single one. all day. No problem. Looking at keep trade cut. I mean, he, he's value equivalent on keep trade cut. If you throw this up on the screen to Daniel Jones in a super flex league, that's ridiculous. The one Oh seven and the one Oh eight. What's our ADP say? 107. Yeah. He's right. He's back to back with the one Oh seven. Javante Williams, which I could see why you'd want Jamo over Javante Devonte Adams probably taking Devontae Adams there, but you know, it, it's mainly for us. Again, we love JMO. It's mainly for us. The fact that he jumps this far in value without really anything to show for it. And that the situation in Detroit has changed. Now you're probably going to see Amon Ra be that cemented wide receiver one there. Uh, and, and look, a lot of people are saying, look, this is only going to help Amon Ra. I, I think I'd agree with that. I mean, you, you see that a lot with a, a field stretching wide receiver like JMO. Um, and, Diggs, and Amon and Ra, Davis. who's going to be a target hog. So, yeah, absolutely. I see that. There are a lot safer guys, I think, with less injury history, yeah, with more yeah. target and opportunity. I've, yeah, and I've seen some mocks happen recently where JMO has fallen to the end of the sixth or even the seventh round. If he gets to that point, go yeah, ahead and grab you, him. You I'm, I'm, I'm fine with him there. Again, it's but not going him, it's a, his a, price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. going around and a half ahead of where he should be going when his ADP probably should have stayed where it was. Is just that's too much to ask for me right now. All right. Uh, the next guy that we're going to highlight today is George Pickens. Now, George Pickens was a guy that I was not high on earlier uh, in the draft process last year. Obviously, he got um, decent draft capital, second round, and went to the Steelers, which is kind of where, you know, wide receiver prospects, they'll do, I think they'll do okay, probably, is normally what happens in Pittsburgh. And so he went to the Steelers, and then he was a preseason darling. Everybody saw all of his training camp videos. Everybody heard all of his 
silly quotes and and everybody jumped all over the bandwagon. And then during the season, you know, while he wasn't the total breakout that we thought he was going to be, the wide receiver won the rookie of the year after everybody said after the preseason. Um, you saw a lot of really impressive things from George Pickens. You saw again those physical traits that he brings. That honestly, he's unique. I've, I mean, I've never seen somebody have some of the physical traits that he does in terms of like his body control, his catch radius, things like that. And you saw him make some really good plays. I think you saw, however, <clears throat> that George Pickens was ready to kind of move into his role as an NFL wide receiver. And tell me a little bit about why that role is not a wide receiver one, because that's the I think that's the big thing that people are kind of mistaken here. Yeah. So his yards per reception were fifteen point four yards per reception, which is is pretty high. Um, that was actually number three in the league, uh, average depth of, depth of target, which obviously is telling you that he's going to be one of more of those field stretchers, one of those guys that's going to be a deep threat, maybe getting less targets per game in the future. And again, as a rookie, he had 9.8 fantasy points per game, which is fine. It's good. I, I know we haven't been praising him as much as we have like Drake London, who have really produced at the same level their rookie season, both having over 800 receiving yards. And yes, while that's impressive for a rookie, our issue is that George Pickens' ceiling is just capped. We really like Kenny Pickett as a dynasty asset. We think that he is safe. We think that he's going to go up in value even this time next season um, or this time next year. But uh, you're lying to yourself if you think that he's going to end up having QB1 numbers consistently. He just doesn't have a very high ceiling. He's safe. You know what he's getting. You know what you're getting from him. And in in our eyes, Deontay Johnson who they re-signed, Pittsburgh re-signed, by the way, is the alpha wide receiver there. He is. He's the target he hog. He just is. He's the reception beast. And honestly, yeah. when you're playing in full-point PPR leagues, like those are more the type of wide receivers you want. I mean, Deontay Johnson averages, I think, 13 points per game this year. And yeah. he had how many touchdowns? Deontay Johnson? Yeah. Zero. It's zero touchdowns. That's not happening again. Not happening again. Yeah, and not to mention, we're not big fans in fantasy of Pat Fryermuth, but he definitely is significant in our analysis of George Pickens' future dynasty value, is that that's just another red zone threat. Then you have Najee Harris on top of that, who was on a down year. Yeah. And he's going to have a comeback season, we would bet, as well, yes. because they really started to use him more efficiently and in a better way towards the end of last season, and that's when Najee really started to pick it up again. If they use him like that and Pat Frymuth continues to be a red zone threat and Deontay Johnson ups his touchdowns, George Pickens is probably going to be pretty underwhelming next year if you're expecting him to be a very um, hyper-productive wide receiver. So looking at keep trade cut here, and if you look at our ADP, the guys that are evening the trade here with George Pickens, a value equivalent, the 2023 109, I'm definitely taking the 109. Definitely taking the 109. There's, you're going to get receiver talent there in the draft that's going to be better than George Pickens and have wide receiver one upside. Christian Watson. I think I'm taking Christian Watson over George Pickens, don't you? I think Christian oh, absolutely. Watson. I think he's got a, yeah. a higher ceiling yep. for sure. Because not, not only not only my personal opinion of Christian Watson, but his market value is going to go up regardless. If you hear that Rodgers is staying in Green Bay, yep. you're like, well, yep. he already knows Watson pretty well, and look what they did at the end of last season. Or Rodgers is going to leave, Love's going to come in, and you're going to see those training camp videos, and Watson's value is going to go up. Yeah, uh, Trey Lance. That, that's in a superflex league, not close, guys. Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Yeah, that's, keep trade cut. They are. That's they a are equal joke. It, it is a joke. I mean, George Pickens oh is the wide receiver twenty three on here. So Michael Pittman as well, and Michael Pittman again. He is going to be a target hog. He is a PPR beast. Take the people with the targets. Michael Pittman also added, yeah. you know, some touchdowns this year. Playing with Matt Ryan, playing in a passing offense that was extremely underwhelming. You have to wonder what Michael Pittman's going to do if he gets a CJ Stroud. Yeah, and you can get some super producers here at the tight end position. Um, according to our ADP, you can get Goddard and Kittle. Smash um, if you the uh, instead of Pickens. Yeah, it, it's league. funny to see all these guys producing around Pickens in our ADP compared to what Pickens did at nine point eight points per game. Cousins, 18, Goddard, 12, Kittle, 13, Chubb, 17, Ramondre, 15, Judy, 14, and then Jones and Pickett going way after George Pickens in our ADP. That's just crazy. That's, so, that's bananas. Yeah. So Kenny Pickett is, is behind George Pickens right now? Yeah. That's crazy. And Daniel Jones. So we've got a good amount of – we've got a, we've done a lot of ADP. We have over 30 drafts in our ADP data now, and they're heavily weighted for the most recent ones. So this is accurate data. We're doing super flex tight end premium leagues, and you're seeing George Pickens go ahead of Kenny Pickett in a lot of these, which is insane. But, again, there are safer assets to move off of from George Pickens – like all those guys are listed. Like all the guys, like all the guys he listed. He's still twenty-two. He's still going to be. He does have 
a place in fantasy football. He's still valuable, but they were definitely moving off of him for some of these guys, uh, 100%. All right, moving on to our next guy. It's going to be Calvin Ridley. And this is funny because I think everybody was under the impression that, oh, everybody forgot about Calvin Ridley. Well, then everybody remembered Calvin Ridley at the same time, so, which happens a lot in Dynasty. So now you've seen Calvin Ridley slide up into the seventh round, I think, is probably where he's slotted at in our ADP. It's where I've been seeing him go the most, seventh, eighth round. But the issue here is that, um, well, I guess a couple things. The most notable thing about his ADP is that he's going above Christian Kirk. But tell us a little bit about why Calvin Ridley actually has some pretty big question marks associated with his price right now. Yeah, so the biggest question mark being the investment. This is a common misconception right now. Everyone's saying the investment into Calvin Ridley that the Jaguars um, put into him was a second-round pick. False. Not yet. Um, That's all dependent on whether he's officially reinstated in the NFL or not. We would assume that that will happen soon. Um, just last week, he I, uh, less than a week ago, he finally reapplied to be reinstated into the NFL. Um, but man, if he get, if he doesn't come back, it's not like the Jags lost anything. They 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 would give up a fifth round pick yeah, yeah. if he doesn't play to the um, level or or to the amount of time that they expect him to play going into this this next season in 2023. So with that being a really significant conditional pick, that shows you that the Jags aren't even certain about Calvin Ridley's future. It was enough for them to take a shot, but I mean, that's a big gap between a fifth and a second round pick. Huge. Um, Christian Kirk is not just going to stop producing or take a big hit from Calvin Ridley when he already has a full season in the bag with Trevor Lawrence, being able to get a grasp of that offense to be utilized correctly. And then there's a bunch of weapons around there as well with ETN with, yeah, even Zay Jones who will probably take a hit, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Calvin Ridley hasn't played football for two years. Bingo. It's going to take him quite a while to really get back into the groove if he ever does it all. I mean, we saw this with Michael Thomas. And Michael Thomas, of course, struggled with injury, so it's a different situation. I get that. And he wasn't coming back to an elite QB when, when he came back and played. But the point still stands that when you haven't played football for a very long time, I, I mean, even Deshaun Watson, too, he looked like garbage for the half season that he played once he finally came back, Ridley's probably not going to start producing until I, I would bet at least until after week eight. And that's assuming that he comes back week one. That's yep. assuming he's even reinstated. Yep. Now what I would do is if you're an owner of Calvin Ridley right now, I would not sell him right now because once he is reinstated, which we would assume that he is, his value is going to go up even more than it is right now. Go sell him then. Yeah. It's all about timing on that one, but um, again, I think now it, the fact that he's sliding above Christian Kirk is, is crazy. I mean, you talk about team investment. Look at the team investment they have in Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk, I think he looked good in Arizona. He's the one they've I, actually I paid. predicted he, he would do well in, in Jacksonville. He has. He's tied to Trevor Lawrence. They have good chemistry. He's going to be the wide receiver one there, I think. I mean, that's that's what my prediction is. But looking at where Calvin Ridley is, oh, good gosh, on keep trade cut. Who evens the trade for Calvin Ridley? Russell Wilson. Oh, boy. Uh, the 201, please take the 201. Pat Fryermuth, I would take Pat. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins averaged 18 points per game in Superflex Leagues. Guys. Continually underrated. Yes. I, I'm taking all of those guys over Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Uh, he's, ar- he's already 28 years old. He, again, he hasn't played in two years. That's there's. A, he, I hope we've demonstrated there are enough red flags with Calvin Ridley, and then there are way safer assets to to pivot to. So um, last guy here is going to be Kadarius Tony. And I don't know if you heard or not, but because he caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl, he's back. Like, why should one? His one reception in the entire game for five yards for a touchdown and then a punt return. This was funny because, like, if you look at his graph, his market value graph on keep trade cut, you saw a huge spike when he was traded to the Chiefs, which I don't I don't ever understand why people do that because Mahomes, I mean, Mahomes will say it's a different guy every game. It's a different receiver every game. And then he actually does it. It's, it's MVS and then it's Tony and then it's Juju and then it, it's Kelsey every game. But... I don't understand what the appeal is with the Kansas City landing spot for Kadarius Tony. I think he's very athletic. I think he was somebody that had really explosive film coming out of college. But quite frankly, you know what? He was in the doghouse in New York for some reason. We don't know why. So there's something there. He was traded. I, or he was was he traded? He or was, was he traded. Released? I think they gave up a third round pick for him. Did they give up a third? That kind of surprises me. Anyways, uh, he went. Then he went to Kansas City. He had one game and his value went bananas. And everybody's like, "Oh, he's back." 
And he didn't do anything. Again, like he's he's very hit or miss. He's got a great skill set, but in, even in Kansas, great City, asset for he, the team. I mean, he's a lot of the reason they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, he's very versatile. But from a fantasy perspective, and you're looking at consistency, that's not really what you're looking for. I don't think with, with Kadarius Tony and. I don't see a huge, huge value spike. He's a wide receiver, thirty-eight on keep trade cut. But if you're looking at what you can get for him, the two hundred thirty-eight, the two hundred six, significant. Yeah, the two hundred six this year. Give me yes. the two hundred six. Uh, yeah, twenty twenty-three mid second. Who else? Who's who doesn't have an RDP? These these results kind of suck. Twenty twenty-four early second, which I'd take that all day. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for him right now. Uh, he's around Tyler Lockett. Same thing, two hundred six. <laughs> um, Darren Waller. Um, Wandell Robinson, Cortland Sutton, Brock Purdy, Greg Dulcich. Purdy, yeah. There's probably, geez, one, two, three, probably four of those six guys that, that I'm taking over Tony. So probably sure. the softest sell out of all definitely of these a soft because sell, his yeah. value still hasn't rebounded um, as much as we thought it would. However, you're still looking if you can get more, slightly more than this, something on the higher side of that price range. Yeah, you can just kind of cement that value and into something else. This is also assuming that I, I mean, Sky Moore is. This is assuming Sky Moore is not going to take a step up, which I think he will going into next season. And wise. the Chiefs are going to dra- they're going to draft a receiver. And we've seen a lot of mocks where Quentin Johnson's being mocked to the Chiefs. And spoiler alert: Quentin Johnson will be a sell if 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 that happens. I think anybody would be a sell. So. It, for whoever goes to the Chiefs, as long as Kelsey's there, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, th- nobody's going to be Tyreek. But Hill. Quentin Johnson, especially since he has such impressive physical traits, and people are already so high on him, like yeah. he yes. would be. People would start ranking him a tier above JSN if, if he went to the Chiefs, and that's just, that's when I'm selling him. But. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so those are five guys. Again, we like these guys as players, as NFL players. We wanted Terry McLaurin to come to the Colts. Come to the Colts. I would have been. I'd be happy if any of these guys. Yeah, were when my those trade team. talks came out, man. Even Pickens, we were maybe I thinking would he be a good fit with the, with the Colts as well. But I think, and I hope we've demonstrated that there are safer assets you can pivot to. And look, we could sit here and give you guys that are 30, 31, guys that are coming off of injuries, and say sell these wide receivers. No, we're giving you guys that are healthy, uh, that are significant, meaning they're going in the top, usually eight rounds of startup drafts. So guys, and that you could just be pivoting off of to get something safer and to insulate your value better in Dynasty. And that's kind of what the entire goal of investing in Dynasty is. So it might be controversial. I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments what you think of this video. Um, but again, I think there are for sure safer assets to pivot off of from these wide receivers. So make sure you smash the like button and make sure you subscribe. We've got Dynasty content coming out every single week. And uh, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to support us. Make sure you head over to our Locals page as well. Uh, We've got our rankings, all of the ADP data that we referenced in today's video, uh, exclusive trade advice, live streams, mock drafts, listener leagues, everything you can think of. So make sure you head over there to check that out as well. As always, we really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you later.